Welcome to episode three of Eat, Drink, Write, an urban fantasy whiteboard. I am Sherry Ellison and I'm here with Taylor Ellison and we are going to delve into character building this week. But first things first, mm -hmm. what are you drinking? Tea, always, almost always. There's occasionally alcohol in there. <laughs> <laughs> I am drinking tea as well today because it's morning uh, for this recording and we are eating breakfast food. We've got ham and eggs and grits. Which... We should have done mimosas. Oh, <laughs> next time. That's a great idea. What were we thinking? <laughs> well, how was your week this week? Uh, it was pretty good. Uh, I didn't get as much writing done as I wanted to. I, I'm on this deadline for the March conference that we're going to. Um, I think we talked about it in one of our previous episodes. And I need to finish my book by March 7th. And I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not there. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little worried about that conference. I've got nothing ready. I, I think, depending on who the agents are that are going to be there, I think I'll pitch uh, Frickin' Fairies again. Mm -hmm. I, it's the one that's most ready, I think. So. Yeah. Um, but I haven't worked on it at all. I haven't mm -hmm. worked on my pitch. So I've got to get that done before March. Yeah. My week was okay. Hubby was out of town um, at a trade show. So it was just me and my youngest. Uh, which was fine. So I actually got a little bit caught up on my real work. My, nice. Um, I'm a lawyer, so yeah. had to get some of that real stuff done. <laughs> Gross. Um, yes. <laughs> um, okay, so let's jump into character building. And I think I was going to, I wanted to ask you, mm -hmm. what comes first, the character or the story? <laughs> the chicken or the egg? Um, <laughs> for me, it's usually a character. I like to world build around a character. I kind of get this idea for a character in my head and then... I kind of like to figure out where she belongs, or he, I guess, but I'm, I'm usually female protagonist, mm -hmm. so. Uh, yeah, no, it's usually usually the character first for me. She just, like, pops up into my head, and she's talking, and she's there, and she's, like, put me somewhere, so. And, and then a story evolves Follows. around her. Right. Interesting, yeah. yeah. I Both ways. I Sometimes the story idea pops into my head, and a character that fits that story evolves mm -hmm. from the story yeah but most of the time like you it is a character that she, she just I usually am she's as well just starts talking and and then they never shut up and we go crazy yes <laughs> that's all writers do so where do you get your character ideas from you know I used to think that they just kind of showed up that they just like pop they did just pop into my head but I, I realized I think with um my more recent books, like, I get a lot of inspiration from, like, the media that I consume. So TV shows, books that I'm reading. Do you ever get character ideas from dreams, or do you only get story ideas from dreams? I've only gotten a few a few story ideas from dreams. And I think the first one that I ever had was the one that we tried to write a book together with. Kitten? Mm-hmm. Ah. Yep. You were the one that came up with that? That was <laughs> yeah. you? From a dream. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, that was a good. It's a werewolf named Kitten, which has now been done since then, but we, we yeah. wrote this years ago. Yeah. Um, but I don't usually dream too much about my books. That's interesting, because yeah. I dream full-length novels, mm -hmm. and I only wish that I could remember them when I woke up. Or the ones that I do remember, I wish made as much sense when I'm awake as they do when I'm asleep. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, okay. That's fair. That's true. I do wake up from these vivid dreams and I'm like, that would make a book. And then the more that I think about it, the more I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> what was I thinking? <laughs> Absolutely not. So I don't know what you want to start talking about. I mean, do we talk about the physical attributes or the names? What? How do you go about evolving a character? Um. So... First things first, I get the character idea in my head, and it's usually just like a skeleton of a character. Like um, physically or? Yeah, a lot of the time it is physically. A lot of the time it's voice. The way that she talks, the way that she does things, the way that she thinks kind of. Um, so it starts off with that, and she doesn't have a name yet. She doesn't have anything. So then I start like thinking more about this character and more about like what she would be like if she were an actual person. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what would her name be? How do you, how do you find the names? Oh, I love baby name websites, and it's hilarious because then I get all these funny ads, but um, baby name <laughs> websites are great. I use those a lot, and then I run through, and I like names that are um, either already very short like a like a nickname or names that can be turned into a nickname. I love the nickname uh -huh. thing, too. I get my names, and I'm going to shout out to Emily at uh, www.fantasynamegenerators.com. Mm -hmm. Go and check out her website. It is fabulous. She has names 
for anything you can you can think of. Real names, fantasy names, vampire names. I mean, just... She... I feel like it... Doesn't it do, like, city names, too? Yes. So if you're uh, writing, like, fantasy, like, good city name ideas or mix and match, I think I do that sometimes, too, is, like, find the name that I like and then find another name that I like and mix those together. And... I mean, she has more than just names, too. She's mm-hmm. She is brilliant, and I can't believe that she runs that, that website herself. Uh, but go check her out. And I, that I use religiously. Nice. When I'm looking for second character, secondary char- character names. Yeah. Um, sometimes main character, but usually my main character's name pops into my mm-hmm. head. I have no control over that. Like in my second novel that I wrote with, that was the romance, mm-hmm. um, fantasy romance with Chitara. Chitara, yeah. Yeah. What a weird name. And that <laughs> yeah. just popped into my head and she's like, no, that's my name. And I'm like, well, alrighty then. Which kind of comes into your next point here is like, what are the pros and cons of weird names like that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, you know, I hate reading a book and having a character's name in my head the way I think it is. Uh-huh. And then to hear the author on TV say the name and I'm like, oh, <laughs> that's not how I, like Hermione. Uh-huh. I never oh, yeah. knew Hermione was pr- pronounced Hermione. Yeah. Until um, it was like the movie yeah, came which out. And... I, I love Hermione. Mm-hmm. So that, yeah. that's a cool name. But yeah, when you have a weird name that's not common knowledge or phonetically right. common, it could mess up your reader. Right. Cause I saw a post recently about um, weird names like that, and, and especially in like fantasy novels where um, it's like this long name and it's like all these letters and, you know, you try to read it the first time and then eventually you're just like, I'm just going to pronounce it as blah, blah, blah in my head <laughs> until, you know, the end of time. So I think... I think there's probably a balance. Like and it also depends, I feel like, on the culture that you're creating within your, your that's book true. too. Like my very first book, the mm-hmm. one that I that's talking to mm-hmm. me now that I want yeah. to dust off my high fantasy, I have a species of dragons mm-hmm. and their names are intentionally unpronounceable. Right. But they all go by a three letter um, nickname, a nickname from yeah. that long blah 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 blah, blah. <laughs> yeah. but I'm gonna call you Taz I mean yeah. it's it's and so that was done on purpose yeah. I had a weird name on purpose because well, I, I think I that's thought good. it was funny and I think that ties into that that would be a pro of like a weird name it ties into the culture it brings in that's like more true. depth to your world like the dragons can obviously say them but no one else can so yeah. they're just like you're Rex now <laughs> like you know like T-Rex man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so I think that there are definitely like pros and cons um, and it depends on how you use them, I think. As I, that. I do like different names. Mm-hmm. I, and I also like female names that can be shortened to a nickname that's a male, get, that could either be male or female. I'm very into, all, all four of my children, <laughs> Taylor, <laughs> yep. are named with names that could be male or female. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I like those names. There's an urban fantasy series that I like. You would like them too, and I, I'm pretty sure you've heard of them. The October Day series? Yes. Yeah, and her nickname is Toby. So she goes by Toby, and it's Toby Day, and I, I love that. But her like, name I, was October? Mm-hmm. And Toby, that's a yep. I yep. like that. Uh-huh. Y'all have to read those. Oh, they're so good. They're I'll really have to good. Read those. those are by, I don't remember how to pronounce her name. I think it's Shannon McGuire. It's spelled S E A N N A N. I could yeah. be wrong about that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's Shannon, Shannon McGuire. Um, and they're, they're a really good series. So. Hmm. And then nicknames, like you said, I almost always, and I don't know if it's too cliche to do that now, but I really do love it. I, I don't think it's cliche because I think, I mean, you know, you know, my name's Taylor. People call me Tay. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's like a normal human thing to create nicknames for people, especially if you're dealing with familiar people. So if you're writing in first person, like we do for urban fantasy right. a lot of the time, if they care about someone, they're probably going to shorten their name or have like a cute nickname or, I mean, not always. Like I have my main character, Aiden. What, yeah, what? how do you shorten that? <laughs> I mean, I guess it gets hey, hey. 80, 80, <laughs> I don't know. Like, so not always, but I feel like it's a natural, like, human thing to create nicknames for characters. Now, along the lines of naming characters, mm-hmm. um, I have read that you shouldn't have, in order to not confuse your reader, don't have names that are similar. Like, don't have a Bob and, don't, and then have a Rob. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. then they're going to get confused, especially if, if you have, like, Game of Thrones that had so many characters. yeah. Which one was Bob and which one was Rob? And you That's know. a good point because I had Courtney, my older sister, read uh, one of my books um, before. And I have two characters. One is named Connor and one is named Cam. And she got those confused, I think, because they both started with C. Mm-hmm. Um, and depending on which character was talking about Cam, he was also Cameron. So, like, longer, both mm-hmm. start with C. 
So, so basically, it, it confused her. keep in mind your reader when you're naming your characters. I mean, a lot of times the characters tell us who they are. Right. When we don't have a choice. Yeah. But keep in mind, you know, Bob, Rob, that I can see that being confusing. Right. So beyond naming, did you have anything more for how you name yours? Uh, I Google surnames a lot. Um, oh, yeah. Because, especially when creating a character, I like to... I do like to bring in diversity in the, into my books, but a lot of the time it depends on the character themselves, too. Like, I'm not going to toss in, like, random characters here and there, but for, for that diversity, if I have an idea of who I want this character to be or they're telling me who they are and where they're from, then I want I, like, I to have a surname to match. And so um, I'll go and look up specific surnames and, you know, look at their origins and their meanings and That's that a, kind of thing. Another thing is that you have to be careful, because we are writing fiction, but when you, like, if we used the name Trump... <laughs> in a book, then yeah. there's a definite modern connotation, day connotation yeah. that mm-hmm. goes with that. So, you right. know, and you don't want to step on uh, family's toes by mm-hmm. having one of, you know, a surname be evil, you know, and have those people that are reading it think, but, but, but I'm a Smith and, you know. Right, right. You know, so. Although Smith would be easy because it's like the that, number one surname in that's true. America. So. But yeah, if you're thinking of surnames, I would definitely do a, a quick internet check and see what comes up with that right so that you're not stepping on any kind of toes that's true that did give me another idea though um in terms of what i do for character names is i also go through and look at meanings of names because if i have an idea of what a character like who a character is in my head then i want to name that matches them so aiden is very fiery very i don't want to say stupid but she she gets herself into some situations that (laughs) she could probably be deemed stupid so she's very fiery. She's got red hair. She mm-hmm. so I found the name Aiden, which actually means little fire. Oh, neat! Um, and so that that matches her very well. Yeah, I like to do that too. Um, in Harry Potter, you have Luna, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. Lovegood, mm-hmm. which the moon and the insinuations with the moon causing madness, lunacy, the, lunacy. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I think a lot of um, writers do that, and I, I like to do that too. Yeah, I agree. Okay, I think. I don't have anything more to say about naming. If I do, I'll, I'll throw it back in there again, but we can move on to how do you then flesh out those characters? You've got this, you know, skeleton in your head. Right. How do you make them living flesh? Well, I think, like I said, like, I, it, well, you've got some notes here where you, you know, sex or gender, looks, general physical traits, like that kind of thing. When they pop into my head and they already have a voice, they kind of, like, start forming on their own. Mm -hmm. I kind of get an idea of what what she probably looks like, what she does. Like, if she's athletic and she's talking about that kind of stuff in my head, she's obviously going to look a certain way. Mm -hmm. Or if she's, like, you know, a a desk person or does she like running or does, you know, those kinds of things. And and a lot of the time, I think I actually end up fleshing out their physical traits when I write them. Interesting. So a lot of the ways that, and I do the same thing for personality traits, which I think we'll get to a little bit later, but I write scenes with them and it kind of gives me an idea, a clearer picture in my head of what they look like, of how they act, of how they talk, how they describe things, I do who they are. I do a totally different way that you don't, you don't do it this way. I internet surf for oh, pic- pictures, yeah. pictures of uh, random actors and, you know, that kind of thing. Cause I get an idea in my head of what they look like. And seeing a picture helps me codify what I want to write about their looks. I will say, since I discovered Pinterest and how great it is for storyboarding, I have been doing internet pictures a lot more. There's just so much inspiration that you can pull from Pinterest just by typing in any keyword, brown hair, whatever. Yes. And it'll pull up who, like, all these pictures, and it's it's a really good way to get an idea for a character in your head. Um, a lot of the time it's not exactly how I picture them, but it, it's enough to get me there mm-hmm. and to allow me to see them more in my yeah. head. Yeah, pictures help me tremendously. I Pinterest, I would advise anybody who's a writer out oh, there yeah. to use Pinterest. Definitely. You can, and you, can, you don't have to make them public. For a lot of my books, I have secret boards. Where I have a million secret yeah, boards. <laughs> just for me, just so that when I'm writing a scene, you know, how would she look in this circumstance? I need to see her. I need to look at her face again. I need to codify that in my, in my head. Right. Um, so Pinterest is huge, I think, for any writer. And then you said as you write, you develop them. Oh, yeah. And I read online that you should definitely develop them before you write. No, 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 no. That's interesting. No, no. I get, I get so much more from a character from writing them. 
Um, they express themselves. That's exactly. Because I don't, I mean, obviously I'm the one creating them, I'm typing, I'm doing all of that, but they... They have a life of their own. They do. They absolutely do. So I go through and I I write a scene. I pick what the scene is going to be. Are they just sitting at a table talking with another character? Are they just going about their normal morning routine? Are they cooking dinner? Do they like to cook? Whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, And sometimes the character is like, hell no, I don't like to cook. I'm going to slap a grilled cheese on the stove and burn it and (laughs) order takeout. Like, that's just like, and and writing that scene helps me figure that out. I agree. I'm kind of, I know there's a term for it. The people that are, and we heard it at a seminar and I can't remember now what it was. The people that wing it and the people that... Pantsters. Pantsters, that's it. uh, Versus plotters. Yes. I believe. And I I am unfortunately more (laughs) of a pantster because I, I do think there is a place for an outline and a you've got to have an idea of where your book is going. But I also like to give my characters free reign when I was writing that first uh, romance mm-hmm. novel, like killed off an entire race of you sure people did. and it wasn't expected. And yeah. so if I had structured myself, I wouldn't have had that. And I thought that that part turned into an extraordinary part in the book that I didn't plan for. Right. So I don't like to limit my characters and try to confine them. I like them to grow on their own. Well, I think that's why I like to rewrite so much Mm -hmm. is because it it allows me to give my characters those freedoms. Um, And I can outline or whatever and, you know, plot all day long. And my characters are probably still going to do whatever they want. I have a character in the book I'm writing right now who was supposed to be this sleazy asshole and he ended up being more like heartwarming to me. Um, he's still a sleazy asshole, but he's he's charming. And so they just kind of do like whatever they want to do, mm-hmm. um, which is why once I'm done with the first draft, then I can go back and look at like, okay, this is what my characters wanted to do. I'm going to make it more refined. Right. Um, and this is what could happen. I can make my descriptions better. Mm-hmm. I can make this a better setting. I can do this kind of stuff. Uh, so. We'll have whole entire podcast uh, sessions on editing. Oh, yeah. To come in the future. For sure. So... On the, on the other hand, well, I think also when your characters interact, it's like real humans who interact. They mm-hmm. Things happen that you can't, you don't know what people are going to say, even though it's coming from our brains. Right. You, you honestly, I mean, they I get talk. surprised all yeah. the time by what they do. And it works because they're humans interacting with each other. Yeah. Fictional, but, you know, they're there. Absolutely. No, I agree with that completely. Okay. So... One of the things that, and, and I actually really enjoy character um, details and, and creating my character. You know, how do you come up with what jobs they do? What are their hobbies? What are their activities? Do they tell you or do you actually search on the internet for ideas? So I think a little bit of both. I think when I first started writing, I wanted to, you know, write what you know. And I was a college student when I first started writing seriously, so Aiden was a college student. Mm -hmm. Um, Aiden is the first character that I ever wrote into a book, uh, besides the one that we tried to write together. So with her, I kind of made her like more of a familiar, familiar setting. Um, And then in one of my other books, I completely made things up. Louie and Delaney. Yeah, that is one of my favorites of yours. The so that that story of mine is not a masquerade. So magic is known throughout the the world. And they use it in everyday life. And so they have jobs that are based on that magic. So I made those up completely. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, like sh- one of my characters is, even though she's using magic to do it, is basically a therapist. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, so that's that's her job. And that, that one just kind of came to me because it just fit that character. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it depends on, on, you know, once you get an idea of who your character is, what do they like to do? Do and they I, like I, their job? I think it takes brainstorming and for some people this is an overwhelming Mm -hmm. thing to try to to do how do I create this this character that's going to carry my story but what I like to do is just sit there and brainstorm you know an an urban fantasy has a lot of police officers and private investigators and that kind of thing and so I don't necessarily want to do that because although it is handy to have those characters but I'll, I'll brainstorm you know I'm a lawyer but I have not written the character that's a lawyer yet. Right. And so I'll come across, you know, do I want him to be an engineer? Do I want them, you know, no, that doesn't fit her personality. Do I want her to be in IT? And also, if you do have your story in mind already, you need 
you know, where is she going to need to have access to? Right. Which is why private investigators are so common because right. a lot of times in the mystery of things, you need to have that character be able to get into those things. Right. Whereas me, I'm just a lawyer that goes to, you know, I would never have access to some of those things. Right, exactly. And I think, so I'm trying to think about the book that I'm writing right now, she's a restaurant owner. She owns a restaurant on mm -hmm. River Street. And I think her job came from the setting because I knew I wanted it set in Savannah. I love Savannah. That's where I wanted it set. So I had to look and be like, you know, what can she do in Savannah? What's, mm -hmm. what's a good That's job true. for her? And so I chose it's restaurant owner. There are lawyers in Savannah. You're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. Mac is also not a lawyer person. So <laughs> she's a trickster by nature. So oh, she... Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> I don't know that she would do well with uh with being a lawyer. With so. order and, and yeah, yeah, no, she's more chaotic. She's <laughs> she's she's a little mischievous. So I think it, it I think it depends too on your setting, because mm -hmm. um, there are so many different things, and sometimes the job just happens. That's so. true. Yeah, River Street being a restaurant is perfect because there's so many restaurants on River Street. Right. Yeah. And it's a magical town anyway. Oh, I so love good. I love Savannah. Yep. Okay, so. Oh, and one thing I was um, reading on the internet is that you need to make your characters human, even if they're not. So say, oh, yeah. say your main character is a demon, sure, or a vampire, or a werewolf, werewolf whatever, or whatever, mm -hmm. a monstrous thing, thing, <laughs> being. <laughs> For your reader to give a crap about that character, they need to have human attributes we need to be able to connect with them yeah they need to be relatable in some relatable way. so yeah i thought that that was an interesting make them human even if they're not i thought oh that that's a good way to put that that is a good way to put that you also do you think that characters are more important than the plot i think that the characters should drive the plot i think they go hand in hand i think so too i think it's like a i would say it's 50 50 nah, i don't know uh the character you're not going to read the next book in a series if you don't like the character. That's right. Yeah. So I would say the character's important, but if you have a character that's amazing in a stupid plot, I'm right. not going to read the next book either. No, that's true. I I think they go hand in hand. I think they, I want to say it's 50-50, but there are, I have also like, you know, if I like a character a lot, then I'm, I might keep reading the series because if I really enjoy that character then, you know, I can hope that plots get better in later books. I don't know. I want to say it's 50-50. Okay. Back to fleshing out our characters. Yeah. Do you, at the get-go, already know what their failings are? Do you know their strong traits and their weak traits? Do you have that already planned out, or do you discover those as you write? I think it's a little bit of both. So with the book that I'm writing right now with Mac, she has issues with abandonment because she was in the foster care system and she hated it and she doesn't like rules and she doesn't do well with, you know, she feels like she doesn't fit in mm -hmm. um, a lot of the time. And so, like, that's going to bring up issues with, you know, relationships that she has in the present. So I already knew that that was going to be, like, one of her flaws was being able to open up to people kind of thing. So how do you come up with the flaws? Like, that one, I guess you at some point decided she was going to have been a, a mm -hmm. foster care kid. Right. And then the flaw from flows from that. I think so. I think it starts with uh, her background. So, so background is why what? did she end up okay. in the foster care system? Okay. Why was she abandoned by her family? Like what what happened in her past? How did that affect her? And how is that going to turn into flaws? And how is that going to be? That makes sense. It's like uh, Chitara in that romance novel that I wrote. She was human but was abandoned, and the elves adopted her. The elven queen actually adopted her because she had just lost a child and elves can't have very many children right they they are a dying breed and so the queen was so distraught after having lost her child that that she adopted this abandoned human mm -hmm. and so growing up in a culture where elves rule and she's the outcast human right. she that leads i think to her faults of uh in superiority yeah. and um inferiority inferiority an inferiority complex yeah um, so yeah, I think you're right. I just don't know if those things come out when we're beforehand or as we're writing. And I honestly don't remember when I wrote that one. I mean, I had to know ahead of time that she was a human being raised by elves. Right. Um, I think, I think, I think it's a mixture of both. I think I because, think so. because it does, it does happen. So I'm going to go back to my first character that I wrote with Aiden. She starts off, she just lost her twin sister. And so obviously that's going to bring up some issues there. Mm -hmm. um, she's dealing with grief and she's going to 
do crazy things. She moves to a new city without knowing anyone and doing anything, whatever. She doesn't have a job. She dropped out of school. Um, and those are going to be flaws that are going to affect her for the rest of the book. But then at the same time, while I was writing her, I realized that she's extremely stubborn. She didn't want to do whatever I wanted to make her do. Mm-hmm. She doesn't want to do whatever people tell her to do in the books. So that's another that's another thing, and it gets her into trouble. Yeah. And she, you know, she gets herself into these situations because she refuses to do things that would make sense to anybody else, but she doesn't want to be told what to do. And that fly, I don't think I planned. I think that one happened. Someone in the book told her to do something, and she said no. So <laughs> that's that's how that happened. So I think it's a little bit of both. Um, so I do have an interview question for you. Okay. Uh, that kind of ties into what we've been talking about. What's your favorite character personality to write? And why? Oh, you know the answer. I know I do, but this. I want to. I want to hear you say it. <laughs> um, I really enjoy teenage characters. There is something snarky about that age, which I do. I do have a teenager in the home right now, so maybe that's why. It, it's, you've had three others. I so. <laughs> have. She is my baby, so I've gone through this now four times. But I love those characters. They tend to say what's on their mind. They haven't had the wisdom to learn the politics of dealing with other people. And I just love that. I feel like there's a lot of room for humor with those kinds of characters. Uh, And I do. I think think almost every one of my books has one of those type of characters in it. I absolutely love it. And they make me laugh out loud. Things come out of their mouths that I'm just like, oh my God, did she really just say that? I mean, it's just... It's very, it is very funny. So that is my favorite character personality. What about yours? Uh, I like characters that purposefully don't play by the rules. Like, they don't care that there are rules. They don't care about societal rules. They don't care about anything. And it's not necessarily my main character. But I do always have a character that's like, screw it. I want to do whatever I want to do. And I'm going to do it whether, you know, people will hate me or not. And I love writing those characters. They are fun to write. I, I think it would be hard to have one of those as a main character, though, because... I don't know. Aiden's a lot like that. She has, she's, but she's still relatable. I mean, I guess true, that's how true, you true. do it. You yeah, know? yeah, that's true. Because I can't get into a character who is just so outside the bounds mm-hmm. that I just can't understand why. Why are why they, they would so do that. you know anti government or anti whatever it is they're anti because right. they're always anti they're something. They're anti something. So um, I mean, Aiden hates authority. She does not do well with it, and she makes that very clear. Um, and she's one of my favorite characters to write. So. Yeah, I, I, I like that. Yeah. I, I'm trying to think. I think every one of my books has that teenage character in yeah. it. Yeah. Well, very cool. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. And I think we're getting close to the end of our 30 minutes. Um, and I still have so much to talk about about characters. Character worksheets. There are some Etsy worksheets that I use. There are also some books that I've used that have helped... Um, Help me outline some characters. So definitely more to talk about. Yeah, maybe next time we'll go over all of those items that can help us, all those resources that are out there that can help us more better define our our (laughs) characters. Um, Yeah, I'm a writer. Um, Because I would like to talk about all the writer thesauruses out there. Definitely. I use those all the time. And a lot of those are for setting, but there are some specific ones for character, the emotional thesaurus, that kind of thing. So I want to talk about those. Um, And how do you go about organizing your character information? Do you keep a notebook? Do you do it on um, the computer? Is there, what's your format for how you, and I would love to hear how our listeners do it too, because I'm always looking for ideas on how to better organize myself. I am not the most organized person. Mm -hmm. Um, We've talked about the Pinterest boards and that kind of thing. I'd like to hear what our our listeners do. So we'll we'll get, we'll do more about characters next next time. There are things that I've read on the internet that what you must have to have a character have what side characters you must have. And right. I, I take the word must with a grain of salt because oh, as yeah. we talked in one of the other episodes, I think rules are made to be bent and if not broken. Definitely. So we'll talk about more of those things next time. Um, and we will see you then. I do want to thank you all for listening very much. Please follow us on our social media. Facebook is at, drink, at Eat, Drink, Write Podcast. Uh, our Patreon.com, come, come follow us, is at Patreon.com slash EDW Podcast. 
Our Instagram is Eat Drink Write Podcast with periods in between each word. And I just started a Twitter that I'm excited about. It's at Podcast EDW. I, I would love to hear your thoughts, things that you want us to talk about, things that maybe you're struggling with. Me too. And if you if you have any thoughts about what we talked about, um, and if you do things differently, then I would love to hear about it because maybe that would help me too. Me too. I'm always open to new ways to do things and new ideas. So I think this is great writers talking to other writers. Our email, if you want to email us, is eat, drink, write, podcast with periods in between each word. So eat, dot, drink, dot, write, dot, podcast at gmail.com. Subscribe to our, our, our podcast. Share it with a friend. And next time we will talk some more about character development. Thanks, guys.